Hey everybody, welcome back to my jewelry course in tutorial. In lesson nine, we're going to be covering an introduction to the Jewelcraft add-on for Blender. And Jewelcraft is one of the, uh, it's a free add-on for Blender that will allow you to help make jewelry models much easier. So with that being said, let's learn about Jewelcraft. First thing I want to do is cover uh, one of the most important things is Jewelcraft comes with the ability to add in multiple styles and types of gems. So let's get rid of this obligatory cube here because we don't need that right now. And let's go to the Jewelcraft tab and you can see we have a category called Add Gems. So first things first, let's get familiar with this. If we press the Add Gem button, you can see here we have size, carat, stone, what kind of stone it is. And if we hit this little drop down box, you can come down and select any one of these. This is part of Jewelcraft, so it's all built in. If we pick, uh, for instance, a diamond, and we add in, I'm gonna pick a four millimeter diamond, and we're gonna add that. You can see here we've got a diamond with diamond material, and you can tell it's a diamond material by coming to your rendered shader. And when we do that, you can see, there it is, it's a diamond. I'm gonna move this over here, and we're gonna stay in the rendered view, and I'm gonna come over to add gem one more time, and we're gonna select, for instance, let's grab a sapphire, and then I'll press OK, and it's gonna add in a four millimeter sapphire. So that gives you the, the basics of stone type, and now we can come over to add gem, and we can select the shape. I'm gonna come back to diamonds here, and let's just pick, oh, let's say, how about a radiant cut? Let's take this and move it over, Come back to this. We're going to select Radiant Cut again. We've got four millimeters. We're going to click OK, and it's going to put a Radiant Cut Sapphire right in the middle. Now, we can change the material. So if you wanted this to be a diamond, you can come over, select it, come to your Material tabs, and from this little drop-down box, we can select the diamond properties there, and it'll change it there. So I made the mistake. I didn't switch it back to diamonds. So Jewelcraft has the ability to add in many shapes and types of stones so just keep that in mind and the shading and materials are all built into Jewelcraft, which is really cool again you can change this the carrot or the size for instance if i wanted a 6.5 millimeter and i'm going to come over here and select round um, normally this would be like a one carat but we're just going to do 6.5 and we'll select diamond boom there we go and there's our 6.5 millimeter stone that's how you add gems. Now let's get rid of all of these. I'm gonna come over, make sure I've got box select on. Let's just grab all of these and we'll get rid of them. I'm gonna come over to solid viewport shading. So we're back to our original startup file. And I wanna show you how you can add gems and use some of these other little properties here that we have spacing overlays, gem map overlay. So for instance, I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna add in a two millimeter diamond and round diamond okay and i'm just gonna come over here on the top view pressing seven on my keypad and i'm going to press shift d to duplicate and then x to move it along the x axis and i'm just gonna do that a couple times until i get four stones here just like so now with these four stones i can come over select a stone and turn on space overlay and what you'll see is it gives me a little overlay of the stones. And you really want to do that for all of them. Show all. And you can see in between, it gives us a little bit of spacing that we need between the diamonds. In theory, you should never butt your diamonds up against each other because they could be prone for chipping, cracking, and you could damage them while setting them, things like that. So you do want to leave a little bit of space in between. That also helps us determine basically how far away we want these. So for instance, if I took this stone and I'm going to move it over here, I can kind of get it in between these two so that we're, we've got space here. We're equally spaced all the way around. We'll do the same with this one down here. And if you get too close, you see it turns red. So that's just a suggestion. I don't particularly use the spacing overlay, but it does come in handy once in a while. So keep that in mind. I'm going to turn that off. And gem map. So now if we have multiple gems here, It'll tell you which gems, what gems they are. You can turn that on and off. So if we want to see that, it'll give us different colors. For instance, if this was a sapphire, this was an emerald and a diamond, so on, you would get a different overlay on top of those gems. Again, I don't use that particularly much. 
What I do use quite a bit is the next section, which is called Juuling. And in this section, we, we select our gemstone. And we can select all of them if we want by the selection tab here. We can select by size, by stone type, by cut, or by similar. And by similar, let me just, let me kind of give you an idea. I'm going to make this diamond a little smaller. Shift D and then X, and we'll move that over. Shift D and then X, and we'll move that over. So now I've got these three stones, which are so smaller than the originals. If I grab one of these and I want to grab by size, I can select this, and it'll grab all the diamonds that are the same size, or all the gemstones. If I want to select by stone type, I can still select by that and it'll select because all of these are diamonds it selects all of them and for instance if I want to select by cut if I have well, let's go and add in another one and I'm going to add in a princess here and we're just going to move that right there if I select round and then select by cut it'll select all the round stones now this becomes handy when you want to add things like prongs prongs work the prongs tool for jewel craft works really good for round diamonds, for princess diamonds. Um, it, it tends not to work for other shapes, especially elongated shapes. But for instance, I'm just going to go through there here and, and just kind of go over the ones that work well. Prongs work good for rounds. They work good for cushions. They work good for princess. They work good for squares. Trillion sometimes works good. Uh, Flanders, I'm not sure what cut that is. Radiant, Asher. And emerald kind of works good, but there's tricks we can get around emeralds. So keep that in mind. So anything that's kind of symmetrical will work really well. Like I said, I tend to use the prongs section the most, where you can add prongs. And then we have this little prongs tool property here where we can add in what we want. For instance, how many prongs do we want now you'll see one, but you'll notice there's two prongs for each diamond. Now, don't get confused here. That's, uh, that's because by default, symmetry is turned on. So if we turn symmetry off, now you can see there's only one prong per, per stone. And I can go ahead and turn those on. Let's say I make four. We can rotate the position using the position tool. So for instance, looking at this straight down, I could type in 45, 45. And let's go back to top view. And then I can move these in with the intersection tool, kind of make them a little closer. We can position them in a different way if we want. For instance, if I want them set like this. And then again, we can adjust the intersection, which pulls the heads or the prongs closer towards the inside of the stone. And also, for practical purposes, get used to adjusting the top. This should be at least 0.4 millimeters or larger, depending on the stone size. And your diameter is going to be important, too. The diameter of your prong is going to be related to the size of the gemstone that you're adding. Now, for 3D printing, we don't ever want to go below 3.5 to 3.8. That's pushing the limits of a 3D printer. So I like to make these about 0.4 or larger. And if I just kind of move along like that, you can see I can zoom in here and look at the prongs. Now, I'm going to rotate these so that they're not touching each other, just like so. And what I mean when you're designing jewelry is this could be a, an issue in the future. But for the most part, when you're designing jewelry, especially for 3D printing and casting, Gem setters like to have a little more beef on the top of the prongs. So I like to bring those up about, oh, I don't know, enough to bring over the table of the gemstone that you're setting. This will get filed down in the casting when the stone setting is taking place. So just bear that in mind. We also have alignment. So if I take this, I'm going to make the bottom a little longer. And I encourage you to go play with these features. We can adjust the alignment of our prongs. Now, 99% of the time, you're going to do a straight prong, which is going to be zero. But you can change those and bring them in. Bump scale, which is how high the top of the prong is. Uh, you can do flat. You can do round. We can taper, so make it thinner or thicker, depending on how you want it to be. And for the detail, we can make this 64 or as low as 3 depending on what you want for a prong. 
the number of faces that go around the perimeter of each prong. Now I tend to stick with like 24 to 36. You can go all the way to 64. You can, you can actually type in a number 120 and then it becomes very detailed. But remember that's going to increase the amount of memory that Blender is using to, to draw all these in the viewport. So it, or if you get a big design, you could bring down your memory count and slow down your computers. So keep that in mind when you're referencing the prong shape, the detail, and the taper. So that's it for prongs. I'm just going to go ahead and delete the prongs because we don't need those. I'm going to go into much more detail on those later. Now cutters. Let's get rid of this stone here. Cutters are uh, the tool that makes holes in your model. So for instance, I'm going to press Shift A. I'm going to add in a cube. I'm going to drag that cube over here. I'm going to hit SX to size it along the X axis. I'm going to bring it down. SZ. I'm going to set this to be uh, let's just imagine, for, for practical purposes, let's imagine that this is a piece of gold. And we want to design the holes through that piece of gold for the diamonds. What I can do is select all my diamonds, either by clicking them, holding the shift key down and clicking the next one, or select by size. And then I can come over to the cutters tool. Now, for practical purposes, I always recommend putting your prongs in first, and I'm just going to do that here. One, two, three, four. And we're going to change that to 45. Intersection. I'm going to bring that out so that they're closer. And we want four prongs. So let's say I've got my prongs like this. I'm going to make them a little smaller. And that's the way I want it set into my, we'll just call this like a pendant, a diamond pendant. I want to make the holes for these too. So I'm going to select the diamonds by size or I'm gonna select my diamonds that I wanna add cutters to. You can select multiple sizes and multiple shapes. I do encourage you to work with one shape at a time. It's just easier for Blender. We're gonna press cutters. Now we get this cutter properties tab here that we can go ahead and adjust the cutter. So for the top, if we want the top to be taller or shorter, if we want the size to be bigger or smaller for our top, the bottom, of the top post. For instance, if we want to set it like this or like that, however you want to do it. And then we have our girdle top, which is the top of the girdle. And we have our overall size, which I'm going to leave basically as default. And then the bottom of the girdle itself. We can bring that up and down also. Now this, this part of this tab is the whole properties. So let's rotate this around so we can see what's going on here. I can adjust the top of the hole, I can adjust the size of each hole, and I can adjust the length of each hole. When I'm doing rings, I tend to bring the length out quite a bit. I also like to leave a hole that's about maybe a millimeter, so 1.0 millimeters, or smaller, depending on the size of the stone. For instance, if you're using a one millimeter diamond, you'd probably make this like 0.5. So I'm going to make that, let's just make it 0.8 for now so we have that there. And how we get these holes into our piece of gold is as simple as selecting each of these cutters. And the last item we're going to select is the one we want to cut those from. So it'll be our piece of gold. Okay. And when we're going to go to do a Boolean cut. So for instance, I've got my bool tool here and I can go to difference. And what it does is it cuts a hole through that little gold piece. And if I move the diamond, and you'll see the prongs are kind of attached to the diamond, you can see it cre created a little hole for our diamond. Now, some people go by cutting the hole out after you've added your prongs, but I like to add the prongs and, and then for me, when I'm setting the stone, I like to have as much beef on each prong as possible so I can set the stone properly. So once I've cut out the cutters, we can come over here, select our prongs, and then select our piece of gold, and then we can do a union. Boom. And now this piece is all one piece. Okay? So that's what you can do with those. Let's go back a little bit, and let's get rid of the prongs. Let's come back here. Okay. Now, in some jewelry, we have micro cuts. I'm going to make this a little bit narrower. SY, and I'm going to bring that down a little bit, just like so. Now, micro, micro pave or micro cuts in a ring, and 
for those of you who set stones, work with jewelry, sell jewelry, whatever, you've already seen these. What I'm going to do is select all of these stones by their size. And I'm going to come over to the micro cutter. Now you can see it doesn't have a curve. It, it's giving us an error. The reason it's giving us an error is because these are not on a curve. So certain things that we do, we need to apply curves to our diamonds or our diamonds onto a curve so that we can use certain features. The two things that we'll use quite a bit in this course are going to be working with micro prong cutters and distributing onto a curve. I'm going to teach you more about that as we move on, so don't worry about that. We're going to get to it in a couple more lessons. One of the other things that we have of access to is, for instance, let's just look at this from the top. Let's say I've got this diamond right here, and I want to duplicate it onto the other side of this yellow line or this green line, which is our y-axis. I can come over to mirror, and I can hit mirror on y. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's control Z. I can hit mirror on X and move it over onto the other side. So it's taking this, moving it to the other side of the green line along our X axis. So that's how we can mirror things. And you can see if I make an instance and I move it here, just like so, it moves both of them. I'm going to cancel that out. I'm going to select this. I'm going to come over to the mirror tool and I'm going to make it an object. So mirror, and instead of instance, we're going to do an object and I'm going to mirror it on X. Now, if I select this diamond and I move it around, it only moves that one selected diamond. So keep that in mind because we'll use both of those on occasion during the process of this course. Radial. Let's talk about radial. So I'm going to get rid of all this and we're going to come over and add in a diamond. We'll add in a two millimeter round diamond. Press OK. And now it puts it right in the center. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move this diamond right over here just like so. And the reason we would use a radial in jewel craft is if we're doing a halo. Now, I like to do halos completely different because I have much more control over them. If you use the radial tool in jewel craft, you'll have less control over the process of making the halo. But for instance, I do want to show you how the radial works. So let's come over here and we'll add in a one carat diamond. So that would be 6.5 round. I'll hit OK and it adds in a six millimeter six and a half millimeter diamond. I'm going to take this diamond over here and put it right there. And now I want a halo of diamonds to go completely around this large diamond. To do that, we'll select that small diamond. We'll come over to radial and you'll see it's offset from the center. And we are going to select radial and I'm going to type in the number I want and I want it to go in a circle around the Z axis. Okay, so remember that because we're looking straight down the Z axis and we want them to go in around a curve or around a circle from the Z axis. You'll see what I mean in a minute. I'm going to hit radial. I'm going to add in a number of stones. One, two, three, four, and so on until I get these stones close together. That looks pretty good. So now I've got, what do I got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 14 diamonds around the perimeter of our stone and I could go ahead and make kind of a halo head from those. I also like to, when I'm doing halos, depending on the shape of the stone I'm working on, I'll either make the head first or I'll put, put the diamonds first. And you'll see as we progress, I'll show you all the tips and tricks for doing that. Okay, let's get rid of that. We're gonna delete that, we're gonna delete that. Okay, the other way to do this is, for instance, if I add in a two millimeter diamond, I'm gonna put that right there. We're going to drag this over so it's on the side. The other way to put them around the perimeter, which gives us much more control, is to add in a curve. And you're going to learn about these as we progress into the course. I'm going to hit Shift A. I'm going to come down to Curve and add a circle. Now our circle comes in at a standard two millimeters. So I'm going to hit S and I'm going to move out until I make that circle bigger. And let's say I want it right there. Okay. Now this is a curve and you can tell it's a curve by the squiggly line here. And our round diamond is basically just that, a diamond. And with the triangle here, it means it's an object. With our diamond selected, I'm going to hold the shift key down and select the curve. So they're both selected, the curve being our active object. And I'm going to go to the distribute onto curve. I'll click that and up props our properties here. Now we've got a starting position of 10 stones, but I'm going to add, I'm going to make that 14 stones. 
Actually, let's make it 12, okay? So I've got 12 stones there. I can adjust the size here, either by clicking in it or typing in the value. I can come over to the tilt, and what that means is, for instance, if I want these tilted outward a little bit, I can come over to tilt, and you can see I can tilt them in, I can tilt them out. Looks pretty good, okay? If I tilt these out, so let's say I want an outward facing halo, and I want to move the entire halo down, I can go come over here to offset where I can move it up and down, but you can see it moves it wherever the diamonds are pointing. So we're not getting quite the look that we want. And then we have rotation, which rotates them along, the Z, along their local Z axis. I'm gonna change that back to zero. We have a starting position and an ending position. So I can move these diamonds like so, Oops, we had, we had an extra diamond in there. Let's get rid of that. 12 diamonds. I'm going to take my starting position and put it right there. And then that's kind of where I want it to be. I'm going to look at this from the top. We can, we can move that over just a little bit more. And I'm going to do it right about there. And if I needed to move my ending location, I can do the same. Okay, so that's how we would work on distribute on curves. The next thing we'd work on mostly here is going to be weighting and design report. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a model that I just did for somebody. So here's this model that I designed for a customer and I'm waiting to hear back whether or not they want to go ahead and have this made. So if I want to look at the gem report, for instance, I know what the gem sizes are by clicking on the gemstone. I come over to the items tab and it'll tell me it's a 6.3 by 7.25 princess cut. but if I just look at this from the top down, I can come over to the Jewel Crab tab, Jewel Craft tab and come over to, let's turn off objects, destructive. Okay, we want objects. Let's come over to weighting. And I can come over to, oh, let's get this down here. There we go. I can come over to the weighting tab. And if I need to determine how heavy this ring is going to be as it's designed, that gives me an option to select all the material that's not a gemstone. And I've got this design in pieces, so I'm gonna grab these pieces individually, and grab the head, and grab this. So now I've got, I should have, if I do this, yes, I've got all the material that makes up the ring itself, the shank, the head, and so on. Now I wanna come down here. I can turn all of these off if I want, but I tend to leave them on just because they turn on by default. And I'm gonna hit calculate. And it's going to bring me up a list in grams of the weights for each of the metals. Let's say I'm going to cast this in 14 karat white gold. So I'll come down to 14 karat white gold. And it tells me that it is 5.54 grams of white gold with palladium in it. If I do white gold with nickel, it's 5.58 grams. Not a, not a significant difference, but it's there. In the jewelry industry, we tend to use penny weights. So I would convert this to penny weights by taking this number here, 5.58, let's say, and dividing it by 1.56, and that'll give me the weight of the gold in penny weights. A lot of casters like to use penny weight because they can. that's what we tend to use in the jewelry industry. So just something to think about. It's easier to calculate your gold cost at that point also. So let's say it's $110 a penny weight. If I have three and a half penny weight, I can take that 110, multiply it by three and a half, and that gives me my estimated cost of the finished product. I can mark that up as I choose to uh, give my customer a quote. Okay, so that being said, let's just click off of that. I'm going to come over and press the seven key on my keypad so that we're looking straight down at our diamond ring. And then here you have two baguettes here around our princess in the middle, another round, and two more baguettes. Well, if I want to see what that gem map is, I can come over to Design Report, and we can get a gem map here. So I can click on that, and you can see it tells us what those are, giving us different colors. And then our overlays are right here. Now, that's one thing I'll do. I tend not to use this portion here, but I do copy this image and send it to my clients so that they can see the gem map as designed. I'm going to press the escape key to turn that off. And again, now if I want a design report, I'm just going to turn that ring like this. I can select that and then hit the design report. And 
Jewelcraft will give me this little report telling me what this is, the date it's designed, and all the information about it. Okay, so that's available to you also. That's pretty much what I use in the Jewelcraft tab. I don't tend to use the lattice projects or the assets or the curve properties. I pretty much will be sticking to adding gems, removing gems, selecting gems, prongs, cutters, micro cutters, and distributing on curve. And then down here, the mirror function is what we'll be using quite a bit if we do symmetrical designs. So that's a brief introduction to Jewelcraft. Um, after this lesson, go ahead and play with it. Don't worry about messing anything up. Just go play so you can get an idea of what Jewelcraft does and get used to it a little bit. And that should help you as we progress farther into this course. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed Lesson 9. Stay tuned for Lesson 10 because we will be doing um, going into modeling of basic heads. And we'll do a couple different style gemstones to make some uh, basic heads for our models. Thank you. Have a good day.